Okay, let's move on now to uh, some of the latest developments in technologies, in new technologies, and also we'll uh, look at their relation to, uh, to new services and new developments, see how they can again allow uh, us to, uh, to provide new, uh, new services uh, from space or using satellites. This is what people more and more refer to as uh, new space. You've probably heard of the, this uh, new space um, trend. And essentially, um, a new space is a new way of developing space technologies, essentially trying to address uh, this paradox. Why is it that the cost of everything is going down and the cost of satellites has remained very high for so many years? Let's take an example of a, let's say, an old space satellite, a good one, GRACE. Two satellites built by DLR in Germany uh, jointly with NASA, which are essentially looking at each other with a radio uh, wave and uh, making precise measurements of their distance and the changes in their, respect, uh, in their relative distance to measure the gravity field and gravity field changes. Grace was estimated to cost $150 million in 2002 and now GRACE follow-on will be launched pretty soon by NASA and its cost is estimated to be around $500 million. What's inside a GRACE satellite? Well, there's a GPS receiver, there are three radio links, three-axis accelerometer, a three-axis gyro, a processor and a 60 megabytes storage. That's, that's about all the uh, intelligence, technologies, measurements that are made on board. Now, your familiar smartphone, what's in it? Well, a GPS receiver, three radio links, a three-axis accelerometer, a three-axis gyros, a super processor, 64 gigabytes storage, same as uh, as Grace, and even more, a flux gate magnetometer, video cameras, the color display, stereo speakers, browser, and all, all the services. So, one, my point here is that um, there's as much technology in your uh, favorite smartphone as there is in a 500 million uh, NASA satellite. So why is it that the satellite costs 500 million and the smartphone costs five hundred dollars. Well, reliability, redundancy, lifetime, security. Of course, when you launch a satellite, you're not going to get it back. You have to make sure that it works properly for five years. And as you know, sometimes your smartphone will not work very well. If you launch it to space, it vibrates. It's uh, and uh, so the conditions for uh, launch conditions and environmental conditions in space are a bit different. So I'm not saying that we can launch satellites for the cost of a smartphone, but probably for one million, let a few uh, hundred thousand, even a few tens of thousands of, uh, of, of, of dollars is achievable today with the uh, CubeSats and the new generations of CubeSats. So this is, this is exactly what, uh, what New Space is, uh, challenging this difference and looking for ways to build satellites that are much cheaper than they used to be. And um, of course, they will be less reliable, they may have a shorter lifetime, but if they're so much cheaper, then they can be replaced, they can be launched by numbers provided that there's a launch opportunity. So the next challenge for you in uh, new space is really to, uh, to improve the, uh, uh, the launching capabilities. One of them is to get a free ride or a cheap ride uh, on the space station. This is what uh, Planet Labs does with its doves. These doves, that's how they call them. These uh, are three unit CubeSats. Uh, which are uh, carried to the space station and are launched, are just thrown, literally just thrown out of the windows and launched at a flock. And so that one way of solving the, the launch issue, which of course restricts you to uh, being on the, the orbit of the space station, which is uh, not uh, ideal. 
but, uh, but that's, that's one approach. The, the other point with, uh, with Planet Labs uh, is uh, what's the purpose? Because, okay, it's, they've uh, built the, these uh, three units CubeSats, they launch it from the ISS, but why is it, uh, I mean, what for? And what's really important with these uh, new uh, developments, new SAT, is uh, don't do it just for the sake of uh, technology. Find a mission, find a purpose, find an, an application, find a service which these uh, satellites can deliver. Planet Labs, they're making observations. Of course, with such a, the, a point I made earlier, with such a small satellites, you're not going to make the same uh, observation, same resolution that uh, Skybox Imaging is, uh, is, is willing to do, or that we GOI and uh, Digital Globe um, can do with uh, very high resolution satellites which now go down to uh, 30 centimeters. The resolution there, maximum resolution is four to five meters, but the number of observations is such that there are many applications, there are many instances where uh, with uh, low resolution imagery, five meters, but refreshment every hour or so, you, you have uh, some uh, wonderful applications uh, to uh, look at the landscape and the way it, uh, it changes. This is one example. The satellite-based AIS. What's AIS? It's the automatic identification system for ships. It's a system which is uh, operational for uh, many years now uh, to uh, monitor the ships in coastal areas. It's a system which works using GSM and through which all ships which enter the uh, European uh, uh, waters have to uh, declare their name and their position and uh, using this uh, automatic identification systems via GSM. So they did it uh, uh, close to, uh, to the coast uh, when uh, reaching the um, European uh, uh, economic zone. In fact, for, uh, for safety, uh, for security, for track for being able to track goods and ships across the oceans uh, and also to, uh, to uh, protect from uh, smuggling and illegal activities uh, uh, at sea, it's, it would be important to, uh, to get this automatic identification signal from the, from the ships, not just in coastal areas, but everywhere. And obviously, the solution for doing this was satellite AIS. In other words, putting an AIS receiver not on the coast using GSM, but on satellites. And this is what was uh, jointly developed by the European Maritime Safety Agency and ESA, and uh, is now being uh, implemented on, on several uh, satellites. Uh, here you see um, essentially what, uh, what was the uh, location of ships on coastal water using the uh, classical AIS system. And now with Exact Earth, Exact Earth is a Canadian company which is flying a number of satellite AIS um, uh, receivers. This is the description that you can achieve of the... Uh, uh, location and distribution of ships all over the planet. So this is a significant improvement. It's essentially an additional system on existing satellites or satellites which uh, were to be launched for other purposes, which has applications in the maritime domain for shipping companies, for coast guards, for uh, harbor companies, a very uh, significant market which is developing now. Another example of a, a more of a project on which uh, we're working and uh, which could uh, be either a new technology in uh, a new satellite in LEO or a new instrument uh, in GEO uh, piggybacking on existing telecommunication satellites is uh, uh, quantum cryptography. So quantum cryptography is the ultimate in cryptography 
it, it uses the uh, entanglement properties of photons. If you connect two photons, they are connected forever. And even if they are far apart, if something happens to one of them, the other one will uh, see its uh, position change. That's uh, the prediction of uh, quantum mechanics. The advantage is very simple. You, someone can listen to the transmission, can intercept the transmission. The big difference with a, a classical uh, radio transmission is that if there is any interception because of the entanglement of the photons, then the receiver will know that someone has listened to the, has intercepted the communication. So it's one way of uh, transmitting uh, cryptography or transmitting any information but in a completely secure way because of this, because any uh, interference will immediately be detected thanks to uh, quantum mechanics. Finally, let me shift a little bit altitude and, and spend some time talking about drones. Uh, they're not exactly satellites, but there are so many uh, applications uh, where Drones can, uh, can uh, efficiently complement satellites or sometimes applications where drones need satellite to operate that more and more with, we see uh, drones as uh, a complement uh, of satellites. In maritime surveillance, um, the um, drones are uh, going to be uh, very useful and a very good complement to uh, to satellites. This image shows the, uh, the position and trajectory of uh, ships near coast uh, provided by the automatic identification system that I just mentioned. Then the next image shows the position of ships as detected by uh, Sentinel-1, by the radar images of Sentinel-1 in each bright spot is, uh, is one of these uh, is one of the ships. And then if you make the difference between uh, these first two images, you will find these red dots, which are ships seen by the radar, but not identified on the automatic identification system. So these are either small fish or illegal fish. It can be illegal fishing, it can be uh, smuggling, but these, these ships are not uh, declared and hence something has to be done. But the problem is that in order to do something, you have to identify the boat. So whether it's this, uh, uh, this techniques, this is another technique using AIS where you can see this ship, which is actually sailing in international seas, stops at the uh, international uh, boundary uh, before, uh, close to Spain, does the same uh, close to North Africa. It's kind of a permanent platform in international waters in the Mediterranean, which is, according to the Guardia Civil in Spain, clearly a platform to support smuggling. And, um, but the only way you can, uh, you can prove that these people are conducting illegal activities like the, the one on the previous slide, is you have to, uh, to do uh, identification. You have to go to direct visual identification, and this is really what, uh, what drones are good at. Uh, this uh, oil spill detection is another example where you can actually see the oil spill from satellites. That's the example I presented uh, at the beginning of my presentation. But in order to do something, you have to uh, uh, to provide the evidence that uh, this is the ship and you can do this with drones and it's very important. These are images captured by a drone in, in a real um, case uh, scenario and uh, it's important to uh, detect whether you're talking about uh, illegal smuggling, illegal fishing, uh, a big tourist uh, cruise uh, ship or uh, transportation of migrants because this is a big issue uh, currently and all this uh, can only be done, detection can be done by satellite but verification and evidence uh, making can only be made with drones so there is a clear complementarity.